but of you even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Matthew 10.30 Arius Piso jokes about the use of his number system. Also note that jokingly we find the phrase daily bread, in Joseph's Antiquities of the Jews' Ant. 18, 150 lobe. It was Arius Piso, Josephus that also wrote the Lord's Prayer that we find in Matthew 6 11. Jesus many titles. Plutarch, Abelard says Plutarch was Arius Piso, I think he was the Roman Emperor Trajan, affirms Arius Piso's right, to use Hercules titles by saying that Alexander the Great was a descendant of Hercules Plutarch, Alexander. Those titles are the Prince of Peace, the Good Shepherd, Savior, and, the Only Begotten Son. Jesus, Arius Piso, was the light of the world, because he was, of light Lucius, of light in Greek. Arius Piso is Jesus claimed to be the son of David, as many others in his day had also claimed, including Hillel the Pharisee. But by son, he meant descendant. This is the correct translation from the Greek. He is also called the Son of God, the Son of the Living God and the likeness of God. The only real living God was Caesar. Arius Piso was a descendant of the deified Caesars. Speaking in tongues. Acts 2, 4. Began to speak with other tongues. The word used when saying that they spoke in tongues was glossa which is Greek for language. It's another hint to supplement, it was written in Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. Luke 23 38. And so it was. They used rhetoric in combination with the components of each of those languages. Curious Jesus. They interchange the words that they use when they say Lord. Sometimes using despots despot, but mostly using curi curios meaning not only Lord but also curious strange, or mysterious. This is a big hint at what they were doing, especially when mentioned in conjunction with statements such as the mystery of the Gospels. They take the Latin word curia, and then turn it into its masculine form in Greek to get curios. Julius Piso hints at what they were doing in Revelations 18, 8, for strongly curious is the God that judgeth her. And Julius even ends Revelation snidely, saying in Revelation 22 20, Yes come, curious Lord Jesus. Revelation 22, 2, Saints, praise the Revelations Foth John. And that of course, made them want to exclude revelations from the canon. The rupture of the rapture. If you think about it, you'll soon realize that the second coming of Christ, or the rapture, as they call it, is a joke like many other jokes written into the New Testament. Why is it a joke? Because, in the story, Jesus came into the world once, when he was born to Mary. Then, he died, that's the first coming. Then, he came back again after three days and that's another joke that is the second coming. The second coming, that the Christian fundamentalists call the rapture, will never come. Because it had already happened in their own great Jesus story written by Arius Piso. Note, this joke is well known within the inner circle, and is the source for the saying, the third time is a charm. If any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. 1 Corinthians 14.38 a man couldn't help but be ignorant, they were burning all of the books, and writing their own. No one could write without Caesar's permission, and he only permitted his family to write. It was a closed environment. Hitler certainly had good teachers. The third day. That deceiver whilst living said after three days, I will arise. Matthew. 27. 63. And after three days, he will rise again. Mark 8:31. it just so happened, that the crucifixion in the Jesus story took place on Friday, while the sun was still out, and Jesus, if he were a real person, by law, had to be taken down from the cross by dusk not only by ordinary Roman law, but also because dusk Friday was the beginning of the Sabbath, which lasted till dusk Saturday. Let's say for the sake of argument, that he was crucified at dawn, at cock crow, as it is called, then let's count the days. Friday, 6 a.m. to Saturday 6 a.m. is one day. The last mention we have of Jesus is before the end of the Sabbath, which is Saturday at dusk. The next is that he has risen before dawn Sunday. That's not even two days. But in the story, three separate days are implied deliberately to throw us off the trail. Just another one of those darned inconsistencies, that by the way, is the source for the expression, what a difference a day makes. The Abba issue. Arius Piso, as Jesus, calls God his Father, literally with the use of the word Abba. But this same word also means ancestor, or forefather remember the deified God, Julius Caesar was an ancestor of Arius Piso. 
So, read the Lord's Prayer this way, My ancestor who art in heaven, hidden, sacred, hallowed be thy name. Also, Abba, is used once by Arius Piso writing as Josephus as a joke at the very end of chapter 4, verse 7, of, Antiquities of the Jews. But he goes on to hint about it in the rest of his writings. For we do not follow cunningly devised fables. 2 Peter 1.16 No, they didn't follow cunningly devised fables, they were busy writing them. Arius Piso starts off writing Acts by addressing it to Pliny the Younger, who he calls, Theophilus, loved of God, because he is loved of God. That is loved or favored by Arius Piso and the Caesars. To find out who wrote what, you have to know the meanings of the names. They wrote the New Testament in a narrative form and used different names to play the characters, as in a play. Knowing this, the New Testament can be broken down into acts and scenes to see who is playing who. In the year 6 CE, Judea became a Roman province, which prompted Judas of Galilee to lead a rebellion against Rome. He was called Messiah by the Jews. His rebellion was crushed. Then, in 44 CE, Theodos the Pharisee, who the Jews also called Messiah, lead a revolt to gain back Judea. He was defeated. Finally, in 60 CE, Benjamin the Egyptian lead a revolt and was called, Messiah. These Pharisees were becoming a real threat to Rome. This is when Lucius Piso started to work on his story of a Messiah. Arius Piso, later inserts these messias of the Jews in his writings to further ridicule the Jews. For it was his secret way of saying, see it is because of these messiahs of yours, that we made ours. Piso numbers there were three main alpha numeric systems in use at the time when the New Testament was being written, Hebrew, Latin, Roman numerals, and Greek. Until about the year 80 CE, the Greek system consisted of only an old initial system. Arius Piso, Josephus developed a new Greek system and incorporated it into the New Testament. Josephus hints at the use of triangular numbers such as 666 in his Antiquities of the Jews, Book 12, Chapter 2, Verse 9. He is also the mathematician, circa 100 CE called, Nicomachus. This Nicomachus of Gerasa was Josephus' Arius Piso, because, Nico is victor or winner, and Machus means of the battle of Gerasa. Reading Josephus one finds that Josephus was a Roman general at the Battle of Gerasa in 66 CE so Josephus was Nicomachus, the victor of the Battle of Gerasa. Also in history, Josephus is the first person to mention Gerasa. These numbers and their meanings are preserved for us in Mavni of the books of the day, all one must do is look. Some are main numbers, and some are combined numbers. It is assumed that the Pisos didn't use the numbers 1 or 2 as designators, because in Pythagorean mathematics, on which the number system is based, the numbers 1 and 2 are not considered numbers 3 stood for T, and T stood for the cross ref. The general epistle of Barnabas, the apocryphal NT, C30. 4 4 is a small 40, and therefore 12, alluding to the 12. 5 a small 50 check 50, 6 6 is a small 60, standing for, Calpornios Piso Greek spelling small numbers. 666 is a triangular number with a root of 36, which is a square with the root 6, 7 small 70, alluding to the Greek Septuagint which Arius Piso amended so as to accommodate his Jesus story, 8 small 80, p in Greek, for Piso. 9 in the sequence system, Greek, I, which is J in Jesus, was the ninth letter of the Greek alphabet. I is also the initial for Josephus 10 was I, J, for Jesus in initial system, or K for Calpornios in sequence system 12 the 12 apostles, the 12 labors of Hercules and Roman law, which was written on 12 bronze tablets.13 Jesus and the 12. Also, 10 plus 3, Jesus, Josephus and the cross. 14 was equal to 60 Calpornios Piso, in Greek number 16 the 16th letter of the Greek alphabet, P for Piso, 18 in the apocryphal book Barnabas 1812, 18, is 10 and 8 Jesus Piso, 18 is also the new 9 Pythagorean 666, 6 plus 6 plus 6 equals 18, 19 was the total of the name Piso in small numbers. 20k for Calpornios in initial system. Nikon SM, num. 22, Christ, expistos, in Greek small numbers, while at the same time, standing for the Greek letter X, in initial system 24, Jesus in Greek small numbers iota, eta, sigma, omicron, upsilon, sigma, 26, k the tenth letter, 
plus p, the 16th letter for Calpornios piso, equals 2627, Pliny Plinios, in Greek small numbers, honoring, Pliny the Younger 29, piso is, Pison. Normally, they spelled it, piso, Latin form, the Greek form is, Pison. 29 in Greek SM num 30, Jesus Flavius by sequence system and the total of the name Flavius in Greek small numbers 33, Flavius 30, and the cross 3. Jesus died at age 33, because Arius Piso's ancestor Alexander the Great, died at 33. 36 The root of 666 and also the total of the original spelling of Josephus is Josepos Ref. Josephus Jewish War Book 5 Loeb Edition, in Greek small numbers 38 Flavius P 30 plus 8, that is Flavius in Greek small numbers, and small number 8 is P for Piso, or according to Pythagorean mathematic principles, 3 equals T plus 8 equals P, which is the cross, and Piso. 40 to 40, like 4, stands for 12, the 12. 40 is also M 2 M's equal 80, which was P for Piso. That's why Jesus' mother was named Mariam, in the story, Arius Josepos, Piso's mother's name was Aria, Greek spelling, 1 R Aria, which, with 2 M's makes A P for Piso. Her married name was Aria Piso. In the NT, sometimes Mariam, is spelled Marias. That's M plus Arius. Or Argrius and the 12. Ref. The interlinear Greek-English New Testament Barry 41. Calpornios, in Greek small numbers 0. 4242 is 30 Flavius plus 12, the 12, it is used in Matthew 117 as 14 plus 14 plus 14 equals Y42. And also in Revelation 13, 5 is 42 months equals 3 years. 44 instead of using the name Flavius which he would inherit from his father, Justice uses the variant Fabius which he jokingly derives from fava beans. The names Fabius and Justice together totaled 44. Justice played the Holy Church Father, Justin Martyr. And he wrote the anachronistic Gospel of John, the Fourth Gospel. Also, Fava Horse Bean, Ippos Piso. 46. Jesus Christ, in Greek small numbers 47 in honor of Pythagoras' 47th theorem, the Pisos used the number 47 to denote the new Pythagoras, Arius Piso. 50 in the Greek system none, in Hebrew none. This alludes to the source for the name Jesus, from the Hebrew Joshua, Jesus in Greek, the son of Nun. In Aramaic, another Semitic language, Nun means fish. Isn't the son of a fish also a fish? Arius Piso, writing as Josephus, jokes about Dagon, the Phoenician and Philistine god who was half man and half fish. Note that even today, the fish is still a symbol for Jesus 60 the numerical equivalent of Calpurnius Piso in the Greek spelling, Calpornios Piso, in small numbers. 66 The she and bow of the Chi, she bow from 666. Flavius Josepos, Flavios Iosepos, which is 30 plus 36, SM. Num, 67 The name Piso in the Greek sequence system. Piso is the family name as it is correctly spelled in Latin. However, the family used Greek letters to spell it when giving it numerical value. The spelling of the name in Greek is Pison 70 alluding to the Greek Septuagint, which is also Piso's signature of 41 and 29 Calpornios Pison, 80 the P in Piso in the Greek initial system 87 the Pos in Josepos and the phonetic Pa of Puthagopas Pythagoras. They saw the Greek R as the Latin P ref. Suetonius, the Twelve Caesars, Augustus number 88, 90 is 30 and 60. 96 this stood for Arius Piso's son Alex in Greek initial system, but Piso's first son Alex, whom he named after his ancestor Alexander the Great, died, about the year 95 CE, Pliny the Younger took the number when he married Arius Piso's granddaughter, who was Alex's daughter, and in effect became a new son with the name Alexander, as the masculine form of Calpurnia Alexandra, whom Pliny marvied. Reference for this is in Lucian, written by Marcus Aurelius 99 Honor to Pliny the Younger is the total of his full name, Gaios Caecilios Secundos Plinius, in Greek small numbers. In the New Testament, the word Amen, was used to honor Pliny the Younger, because it too totaled 99. What Christian knows that they honor Pliny the Younger every time they use the word Amen? None. But we do 100, KP by Greek initial system. Also see for Calpurnius in Latin initial system 136 this is 100 plus 36. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe, and I will see you again for more videos.